Right, sorry about that. So basically what happened was the other day um, I messed up, so I was going to start doing this again. Um, I had to change the levels as well because my husband said that he listened back to it and he said I was really, really quiet. So I've just been messing around with my microzone, microphone levels. So hopefully that's going to have made a slight difference. But anyway, let's carry on. So I'm going to use the same name again. I'm going to go for the same goals. I'm going to start right from the beginning again because I messed up so badly. Okay, anyway. I had the strangest dream. I was choosing a character class. Cowpuncher, Beanstinger or Snake Oiler. Still gonna go, I think, with Snake Oiler. Snake Oilers rely on their moxie and chitspa to tame snakes. Their fearlessness to extract potent oils from those snakes and their cleverness to manufacture and sell potions made from those oils. You've heard Snake Oilers are doing really well out west since the cows came home. Everybody needs potions and hope in these dark days. And also out west is where all the best snakes live. I wanna be a Snake Oiler. Yeah. So, let's turn that music off. You pull the needle away from the cylinder and stow the handle away. You read the spine of one of your books, Kit Smith and the Mystery of the Haunted Mansion. I love that one! The Curse of the Eerie Tower. Mum gave me that one a few years ago. Winona Hi Hardy and the Curse of the Dark Bridge. I love that one! Escape from the Spooky Barn. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. The Journey of the Dark Cabin. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. The Treasure of Cabot Cove. Rufus liked this one as much as I did. Oh hey, this one might come in handy. You got an item. Walking Stupid. And we are definitely reading that one. You read the book from cover to cover and learn how to walk really stupidly. You got a perk. Stupid walking. You accidentally drop the book and then ruin it by stepping on it 30 times while you're trying to pick it up. Whoops. Walking stupid. Right, the other thing I want to do straight away... Yeah, because you start off with one horn swoggling. I need more horn swoggling. That's where I went wrong last time. So, I know to do that now. But yeah, anyway. Goodbye, desk. Yay, some XP. Hey, Russell, how you doing? Gah. I'm going to miss you, buddy. Gah, gah, gah. Feed Russell a cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Maybe it's time for you to leave, too. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you, calls one last time, then flies away to the west. Time to hit the trail. Right. Let's stack the firewood. There's still nothing on the hat rack. The hearth really puts the hearth in hearth and home. You're going to miss Mum's cooking. It's Mum's pie safe. It keeps all her pies safe. You'll miss meals with the family. Your little brother's room. It's covered with all of his weird diagrams and charts. So tidy. Pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Lection Geometrique. I think this one is about math, maybe? You pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Philosophy Naturalis Principa Mathematica. I think it's about math. Maybe. Pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Corpus Agrimensorum Romanorum. None of it makes a bit of sense to me. It's your kid brother's toy box. Heh, <laughs> he loves stuff like this. You got an item, a puzzle cube. Father Morosely jabs at the haystack. Hat doesn't fit you, Dad. I'll grow into it. It's time for me to leave. Slip quivers a little. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's briefcase, full of snakes. Thanks, Dad. Good good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I will. Goodbye, Dad. Yay, got my needle, got my needle. Your mum smiles warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, mum. We're going to miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I know it's early, but... What about picking locks? Oh boy, that's the one. Enjoy it. Locks and how to pick them. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. Well, mum, goodbye. Going to read my book. Yeah. After you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage. Soon those orphans will be able to make their escape. Go orphans, go! Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Hey Rufus, time for me to head west. 
don't understand why you're leaving. It's got a point, you know. Why are you going west? To help people. You've read the papers, Rufus. The people out west are in trouble. They need all the help they can get. But it's so dangerous. 60% of people who go west get killed within a year, and that statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. Don't worry about... You worry about taking care of Mum and Dad. I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Crimbo. I'll miss you, Rufus. Okay. Give him a playful punch in the arm. Leave. It is time to go. Go west, young woman? Yes. Looks like this isn't your first radio. Would you like to skip the Boring Springs prologue and head straight to Dirtwater? And also, as partners you unlocked in previous game will be available to you. No, I don't want to do that. I want to play it again. Because I'm going to get it right this time. Just skip the opening credits. You just skipped a credit sequence where your character rode a turnip cart across the Great Plains into the sleepy town of Boring Springs. <laughs> and it still tells you who did what. I'm sure it was spectacular. Get that turnip. Ah. Fix that fence. Sign on the door reads, Gone drinking. Now, I think I'd quite like to go and see the sheriff. Hello, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the sheriff in these parts. The what? The sheriff, okay. Blast sign, Peters. Say, you wouldn't have to be looking for work, would you? As a matter of fact, I am. Great, because I am to have some. There's a gang of hoodlums around here who called themselves the Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted him out and took my cell door with them. It ain't, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And? And I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. Why don't you do it? You're the sheriff, after all. Okay. I'll give it a shot. Uh, okay, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, because I'm sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. And that's what gives me the gun. Deputy, you deputised a gun? You're new in town. Maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much here to do here except drink. Here, let me write down where the Fricker Gang's hideout is for you. Makes a little note on your map. Discovered a new map location, Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it. I'll be back with the door. Right, but then I'm going to go in the bar. As you walk in the saloon, a crazy-eyed guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, Dag Nabbit? Well, I, you can't drink in here without a hat. Tain't proper. He points to the take hat leave hat box next to the door. Check the box. You look through the hat box and find a battered derby. That looks like something you'd wear. Yep. You grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, uh, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Gives you a friend Eve's somewhat twitchy nod. Say, gal. Yeah? Heading west? When you need some company, I'd be more than happy coming along. Just let me know. Uh, no pressure. Alright, I'll keep it in mind. Let's go and do this spittoon. It's a spittoon. People spit in it. You know, without even looking at it, that it's absolutely disgusting. It's a spittoon. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's full of spit, regular spit, gross tobacco spit, chewing gum, and it looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting, and the smell, even from a distance, it smells horrible. You're now on your hands and knees peering into what into a filth encrusted spittoon. I don't, I don't understand what's wrong with you. Wait, is there something shining at the bottom? You reach your hand towards the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air, like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. It smells like the vomit through trough at a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like whoop, your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's tureen slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring. Probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations. You've got an item. Nasty ring. Hooray! You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading a reward for lost mugs, 25 meat each. The bartender finally notices you. Howdy, Kelko. Howdy, barkeep. Name says. Brings you to our little backwater. Oh, the usual. Came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Fortunately, Boring Springs already has more people than jobs. It's more of an air in town to catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend talking to the railroad people up by Dirtwater. Railroad? The Manifest Destiny Railroad Company, from back east. They're trying to run a line to Frisco and having a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. Dirtwater? Dirtwater's interesting. It's far enough west that it's still more or less exempt from the rule of law. But not so far west that it's been burned to the ground by the damn cows. What's the opportunity there? She pauses for a few seconds, lost in thought. Yep, if I were a younger woman, I'd probably head that way myself. You mentioned errands. Yeah, the forsaken burg has always fallen apart in one way or another. The hostess always needing help since he hurt his leg, and that no-account sheriff could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. 
Uh, anything else? Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cowpoke from in from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. Anything else? Oh, yeah. There we go. So. Howdy, good to see you again, sir. So, I don't suppose you can help me with a little goblin problem. Found this mug. Who's the fellow in the bar next to me? Well, might be you should ask him yourself saying he's right here. He won't bite you. Okay. Howdy, I'm Sez. Howdy, Sez, I'm Horace. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hall star. I don't know what that is. I'm the town hall selling guy. Gotcha. How's that working out for you? Oh, those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming. Nice. No, I mean horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. Oh. So are you drinking here instead? Yep. And me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious cycle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of a boring one. But it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. Ah, that's right. You need the weak fungicide regardless. I'll take care of it. Who's that lady drinking whiskey out of a beer mug? That's Susie. She's a ranch from nearby. Real tough broad. I ain't recommend you press to her. Why's that? Missed the whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent up frustrations about it. Ouch. So we will come back to you. And I will come back to Gary later on as well. Okay, so let's go to the hosiery. Quickly look through the haystacks and get our needles. This is the most typical horse you've ever seen. Afternoon, ma'am, what can I do for you? How's business? Oh, you know, every day I'm hustling. To tell you the truth, though, it's pretty terrible. All my horses keep running away. Well, except for this completely ordinary one. That's rough, maybe I can help. Oh, God, yes, thank you. Please, I'd go fetch them myself, except for this injury. I'll give you 300 meat for finding them. How many are there? Three. Here, let me see your map. They pretty much always run away to the same places. Draw three little pictures on your map. Or Holmine, Boring Springs and Thousand Snakes Gulch. Why these places? I think they like environments that are thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one, feed some of these oats. That should send it back here. Bag of homing oats. How does that work? The special pigeon infused oats. Okay, will do. See you later. Now, just trying to think if there's anything else I want to do while I am here. Character. Let's see. So... No, I still need to build up my... But I can do that by getting the horses. So let's get the horses. Right, which one should we go for first? Should we go for all whole mine? It's probably a good one to go to. Or... Wait a minute. Sorry, I just had a thought. I'm going to go back in the bar. I am going to go down to where Gary is because I want to see if I can kill two birds with one stone. Take one while I'm here. Grab a bottle. Uh, oh, wait, hang on. Approach with Cactus Man hybrid, he smiles at you. Howdy Cactus Man, how do you yourself? My name's Bill, Cactus Bill. How happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much Cactus Beer and turned it me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why you call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. Oh, does it hurt? Does what hurt? Yeah, being a cactus. <laughs> oh, haha. <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation processes inside the cactus keep part of me keep me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it's a mite boring. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't have to have a newspaper or anything, do you? Yes. Ah, yes, that's where I get my 3xp. Uh, much obliged, partner. Now let me see, what can I do for you to return the favour? Oh, I know, my shovel. I left it behind the outhouse at Allhole Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Thank you. Behind the out -ho outhouse at Allhole Mine? Got it, thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now, if you could just kind of stick the newspaper to my face before you leave. Boom. Right then. 
So now I'm going to go to Warhol Mine and go behind the outhouse. Yes, and that's where I get my shovel. Score 50 meat. Grab the dirty mug. Get some more meat. Unrefined meat nugget. Let's do this. Right, now, I don't think it matters which way around you do this. I think there's always going to be a uh, you haven't done this first moment, but let's try it. So, I'm thinking plungers, no, tools first. Yes, so that's got us a crowbar. Let's get the plungers. Take one of those. And grab a blasting cap. Right, okay, let's try this. Hook up a plunger. Fighting against your instincts of self preservation, you've hooked up a plunger and strung it a fair distance away. Press that plunger. Press the plunger, nothing happens. You've got to hook up a blasting cap. Add blasting cap. Okay, you've succeeded in putting yourself in danger. This makes you nervous. Boom! Dig that up, yeah, that's my shiny silver nugget. See, it's good to have that. Hey there, girl. It's okay, I'm a friend. The horse shies away from you, though in this case it's more like crippling the introverts away from you. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Look, I bought some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that wasn't a very comforting thing to say. As you reach out to pat on the nose, the horse ducks further back into the shadows. Oh, come on. You take a handful of oats out of the bag and hold them out to the horse. Here you go. Yum, yum. She sidles away from me warily and makes a surprisingly good attempt at hiding in her own shadow. Come on, please. Look, they're fine, okay? See? Take a handful from the bag and toss them in your mouth. Ugh, it's like the roughest, blandest breakfast cereal you've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food. Don't ask. You smile to show the horse that you're fine and realise that you've unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Jeez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you warily as you re-enter with a cheerful wave. See? Perfectly fine. The horse hunches her shoulders and seems to shrink slightly as you pat her nose, but she doesn't actually flee, so that's something. Here's a good girl. Really? The horse finally seems to relax enough around you, so you offer her a handful of oats. Warily, begrudgingly, she eats them. Then she gestures at something behind you. Turn around to look, but don't see anything. When you turn back, she's gone. Well, okay then. So that's everything at all, huh? So now let's go to... Boring Springs. Boneyard. I found a Zephaniah Boring, 1806 to 1885. He was actually a really interesting guy. Mug. Benjamin Crockett, 1320 to 1364. He showed up way too early. Beauregard Skeleton, Captain 3rd Cavalry, 1820 to 1866. Let's dig up that grave. Yeah, wait, the skeleton won't work, will it? Oh, I might not be able to do this. Damn it! Put it together, but he's captain after all, and you aren't even a private. Okay, so I do not have the strength to do that just yet. What about this one? Can I fight this one? I can fight this one. Yay! The skeleton collapses into a pile of loose bones. You gain 3 XP. What am I doing so far? Not quite yet. Egg nebbit. Timothy Cochran, 1855 to 1895, devoted husband. Elizabeth Cochran, 1887 to 1895, beloved daughter. Silas Cochran, 1895 to 1895, a baby. Now I just want to check. Whoops, not no, not that one either. So I've got the deputy pistol and the broken board, that's alright then. So I've kind of got everything that I need at the moment. Okay. Pause quickens as you get in the spooky translation that's horse. You approach the weird semi-transparent horse cautiously so as not to startle her, though you quickly come to the realisation that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there, hi. I'm a friend, okay? Yay! That's a little strange. How did you... How, how you did that without opening your mouth? 
You pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you're going to ride here, you've got an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Yep, still cold. Yep, still cold. Still cold. Still cold. Still cold. Yep, still cold. You get the idea. Here you go, girl, have some oats. Hold out a handful of oats to the horse, which just sort of stares right through you. Please don't look at me like that. <coughs> Try the oats again. Hold the oats out again, but the horse continues to ignore them. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make goats spooky. I guess I could put some bone mill on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt? <laughs> Is that a yes? Weird, okay. Add some grave dirt. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out again. Horse gazes expressionlessly at them and then eats and then eats them. Nay! That she glides away in the direction of town. Bizarre. Should we give this fight one more go? I, I'm sure this is not going to work. Five to six, two to three. Five damage. Poison doesn't really work. On your side. Maybe yeah, I can try that. Why the fuck not? Oh, shit. I mean, it's given me some protection. It seems to have worked. Yay! You put a stop to Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. You gain 12 XP. You got an old cavalry saber, saber and a gold tooth. Yay! So, now what have I got? Ah, still haven't got enough. But I've got 20 XP, which is way better. And I've still got a horse to get yet. So, I should get enough XP from these fights to get my horn swoggling up. And then I can go and get the Freaker Gang, I think. I think, I think, I think. I'm going to give it a go anyway. All right. See how this goes down. I think I can kill this one pretty. Yeah, I can kill this one pretty easily. There we go. Uh, you've seen snake. Pull on the you snake murder and says you gain three XP. Collect one venom and one medicine. Yay! Another snake. Well, I guess it's not called one snake gulch. Tack it. Shoot it. Shoot. Yeah, that one's not too bad. More 3 XP. Now this means I got my horn swaggling, which is what I really needed. Because if you've got two horn swaggling, you can do the Furka Gang. And that's where I went wrong last time. Ooh, okay. Yes. I was a bit worried about that one. Nice work. If the whole cowgirl thing doesn't work out, you could always get a job as a snake exterminator. Gain 9 XP, collect 2 venom and 2 medicine. Yep, yep, yep. Nah. This horse has gone snake crazy. Or maybe he was some other kind of crazy before. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella. I'm a friend, okay? Yeah. It's cool, right? Be cool. Don't freak out at me. Really? You calmly look at the horse's eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy thousand yard stare and the other is revolving madly in its socket like he's thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be coming down a little now, but it's clear you aren't actually made of spiders though. You carefully and gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit, okay a lot, but seems to recognise that you aren't going to eat his eyes or suck out his soul, or whatever madness is bouncing around in that skull of his. That's a good boy. Mm. Are you hungry boy? I've got a little treat for you. Snurf. You feed the crazy horse some of the homing oats and it gallops away with a whinny. Rather, well, Hopefully he's headed home and not into the twelfth dimension. Cool. Right, let's go back to Boring Sp Springs and buy us a horsey. I don't know how you spotted her hiding that mine, but thanks for sending back my dark horse. Sure thing. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe. Thanks for your help. Anytime. Thanks for finding my crazy horse. He was eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. That's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra for you. Thanks. Afternoon, Mum. What can I do for you? Is there something earlier about an injury? Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the showroom. Don't ask how it's embarrassing. I was going to get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself in the office. Said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. An actual nurse, or I'm pretty sure she's just being sarcastic. I see. You sell me a horse? Sure thing. I should warn you though, horses get mighty attached to the riders. Once you bought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Which one are you interested in? Crazy eyes. Okay, I gotta warn you, the horse has seen some stuff. But I'll sell him for a thousand meat. Something wrong with him? Not as such, he's perfectly functional. But 
Well, he's always sneaking off a thousand snakes sculpt to chew on the with the grows there. And that makes him see crazy things. I think it's more like he does it to forget about the crazy things he sees all the time anyway. Kind of me intrigued. I'll take him. Poopy. You sure you want to name your horse Poopy? Yes. Alright then, Poopy the horse. It's got a nice room to it. Okay. I almost forgot. Free with every horse purchase is a complimentary map. South loose west map. Thanks. Ooh, what have we got in here? Cool. So that's all the stuff we've got at the moment. We've still got the homing oats, which is interesting. Now I have a feeling as well, along with the... F no! I need to trade something. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name, trade's the game. Seriously doubt that his name is Braid. Howdy Braid, what are you selling? Ah, well madam, today I'm trading locks for soap, a stick of dynamite for a needle, and to the cunning skinner who brings me three separate route snake hides, well, to that adventurous soul I will f trade a fine silver pocket watch. Pocket watch. I'll take some dynamite for this needle. Braid, which is so not a name. Takes your needle and hands you a stick of dynamite. Be careful with this now. Right, so I need soap, and I think I get that from the frick again. Off a whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey, your favourite, I'm led to believe. I know she makes house calls. Alright, hold on. Here a rattler, she unlocks the door. Doc Alice looks to be about in her fifties. Her hair is greying and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp, if bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey, stat. She cracks open the whiskey and fills a small flask she takes out of her pocket. Then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here, me or you? Okay, point taken. Prenatal, yay! Hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want to, not that you're going to do you much good in this doomed for signal hole. You should try being this cheerful, Doc. You survey the books on Alice's shelf. They're all medical textbooks, except for a few. I need that. Start flipping through the Goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but you eventually get so engrossed that by the time you take a break from reading, several blurfs have passed, and you know, also know that blurf is goblin word for hour. You have learned to speak goblin. Sort of. The book tells the story of legendary treasure. A massive chest full of premium meat secreted in a hidden sense, not in the extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cowhand named Curly Butterfield. This book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it you mostly just find lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad. So it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. Ha <laughs> ha! At least there are some useful appendices in the back, and some diagrams of appendices. Again, for XP. Apply tree and leaf. Stove is spotless. Either she's really composed about cleaning or she never cooks. Oh wow, this, shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? So, we've done that bit, so we can get Gary. Right, let's get some XP as well. By shoveling poop. Shovel, shovel. It's free XP, so you might as well. Whoops. So now, oh boy. Um, actually, I just wonder if I should go and speak to Susie. I'll trade in these. So that's a little bit more meat than that. Easy Susie Cochrane. How, how did you know my last menu? I saw the graves in the cemetery. I'm sorry if you lost. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into a whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and couldn't do nothing about it. But, cow's right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, my empire used to rattle, ranch cattle. Rattle. Ranch cattle back before, well, before they came home. Well, I didn't make it, but Ma and I managed to rebuild. We launched pigs instead, and she left me the place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch, and they attacked a couple of days ago. Happened so fast, I didn't even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cow smashed in the front door, and the fire started out back by the root cellar. House went up in flames, just blazes, just like that. What did you do? I there wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire, and I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just drained the glass. I ain't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. She feels some mug from the bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. What will you do now? A best, I suppose. Nothing keeping me here and no desire to stay. Can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It's Mars rifle. That's all I've got left of, of anybody. 
left at the ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favour? I need someone to get it for me. Yeah, I'll go get it. Let's go to the Cochrane Ranch. We'll do that first. Cochrane Ranch, substation 91. The water in the trough is boiled away. Susie's ranch house is burned to the ground. Oops, crap. Let's go through it. Right, let's see if I can do this. Oh man, so difficult. Let's have a snake with me. Yes! First time. That was difficult last time. Feed the nasty cow skull for you to in a cloud of flame. Gain 6 XP. Hooray! Let's grab the rifle. There's nothing else to do here, so let's go back. In here. Let's speak to Susie. Found my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as she handed the rifle, and she roughly scrubs her leave Steve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. I'm says. Thanks, says. Can't rightly really say what that means to me. She looks at the rifle for a long moment, then looks back up at you. She sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. Got me to tag along. Head west. Just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. Let's go and speak to Gary, because we can now, and I didn't do this last time. No one does before I go and see the frick again. Goblin shouts, I'm Gary! Uh, uh, hi, Gary? Hi, hi, hello, hello, I'm Gary. Who are you? Well, I'm Sez. Hello, hello, Sez, good to meet you. What's Sez doing down here? Oh, you know, I'm just looking around. Oh, hey, oh, Gary likes to looking too. Gary now looking for a way out of this dump. Gary not having much luck, though. Where are you trying to go, Gary? Hi away, hi away and far up, poop, popping, popping and then new Gary everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Settle down, Gary. Gary doesn't like st settling. Gary wants to travelling and popping. So just going far up and high away, maybe Kate and Gary with you, eh? Huh? Huh? I'll think about it. Now. Now we'll do this. Okay. Alright, got dead eye. Get Gunch and Moxie. Oh. I got unspent XP. Ooh, 24 XP unspent. Let's <sighs> do that. Let's do that. I think we'll leave that for now. Because Glamour, I reckon I can build up a little bit. Okay. Let's wake him up. You poke Thud with your boots, slowly gets to his feet. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Thud is, well, let's say he's no Rhodes Scholar. If we assume that he's seven years from now, then that idiom makes sense. You feel bad about the idea of killing him. Walk away, Thud. Thud, you don't want this life. Take a hike. Okay, you're probably right. Thud stumbles off into the desert. It'll probably be fine. Okay. I'll grab that stuff. Now, I think I made a mistake as well when it comes to the guy in the bath. Let's pass some soap. Mom's hands hand you a bar of soap before sinking deep into the bath and tub. You've got a bar of soap. Cool. Right, so now we want to tie him up. Grab a new by length of rope, carefully tie his hands together, and then tie the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect him later. Sweet, because now I've got the soap that I need. Now, oh god, I really hope this works. Approach them and talk. I think it's that one. Damn it. It's not that one. I really want to lose this. Yes! Sorry. I know that sounds really bizarre, but I keep doing that. So approach them and talk. You're under arrest. I don't need an army. These 52 soldiers here will do just fine. You pick up the deck of cards and give it one hand to shuffle while you unholster your pistol and lay it on the table. Waging my life against your freedom, boys. One game, what'd you say? Huh, alright, Greenhorn, what's the game? 52 pick up. Spray half the deck into each brother's face, then flip the table up and crack both the skulls before they can react. <sighs> Grab the mug. Grab the hall. And grab the door. Yes, we've done it. Excellent. That's it. That's what we needed to do. 
Now we can go back and see the sheriff. Amazing. See, the Fricker Gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my soul door? You hand the sheriff his door and he hangs it back on its hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. Are any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Yeah, one or two that's asleep on the job. I'll go round, up, round them up shortly then. Looks like I owe you a reward. Juice is a big bag of meat. I've got another little task for you if you've got the time. Should be a lot simpler than the last one. What do you need? Well, the Frickers busted the lock when they took the door. Gonna need a new lock. I'll keep an eye out. And I know that there is a lock here. Trade the soap for a lock. Boom! No trades right now. So, how do you manage to scare up a lock for myself? Yep, got one right here. Hand the sheriff the lock. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door, then accidentally drops the key and clatters into the cell. Hellfire. You don't suppose don't suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger. You got a needle handle, Andy? Let's see what I can do. Pick lock. Unlock this yourself, will you? Sheriff walks into the cell and picks up a key. He looks around for a place to hide it and eventually sticks it under his hat. Thank you kindly, stranger. Boring Springs never gets more criminals. They'd better watch out. That's a good job you've done. Don't mention it. Here, have this as a souvenir of your time in Boring Springs. Replica Sheriff badge. Thanks, Sheriff. Oops. Uh, no. Stop doing that. So, yep, now I've got all this stuff. Uh, floppy Derby, Replica Sheriff badge, Deputy Pistol, Broken Board and Nasty Ring. I've got no offhand yet, but I'll pick that up. No pants, no boots. But again, I'm going to pick that up as time goes on. This is all the stuff that I've managed to keep a hold of. I don't think there's anything else I really need to do. Um, found these mugs. Thanks. Told I say howdy. Take your leave. Now, I wonder if I can... Can I play? Look, I have some meat. But crazily. Why she left his full house, two jacks and three aces, and the gun on the right somehow got straight flush. One swoggle him. Explain that jacks are worth nine points each, giving the guy on the left a total of twenty one points and the gun on the right twenty, and you're twenty five plus king, and the king represents Oh hey, look over there. They look, and when they look back they don't notice ten meat missing from each of the thighs. You collect it, you make winnings and stand up. They thank you for helping them learn the game. What do you say? Pete? Who, me? Well, heck, I say all kinds of things. For instance, I've been mining these mountain snogger in left hand saloon, Jimmy Cream Solo. Uh huh. Pete takes a swig of his whiskey. Pete notices the nugget of silver you found earlier. Take that old silver nugget off your hands if you like. Give you only one meat for it. Okay, it's the deal. I give him the nugget. He smiles and hands you some meat. Fine and dandy. Pete squints some points at the unrefined meat all you carry. You ain't seen like someone got much use from a fine ore, stranger. I'll buy it off in your third 73 meat. Okay. He chuckles and hands you some meat. Pleasure doing business with you. Pete's eyes narrow as he gives him his head starts to click. He fixes his gaze on you, taking his eyelids seems more pronounced. Listen, kid, all the stuff I've been buying from you. You've been spending time underground, haven't you? Well, you just told Pete's advice. Stay out of all hell if you know what's good for you. There's stuff down on the 40th level that ain't worth messing with for a girl who wants to keep her eyes. To catch my meaning. Sure I do, but thanks. Let's go back there anyway, because if you missed it last time, basically what's in all whole mine is go up here, go to the 40th level, and there's this. It's a strange black chest. A wave of nausea hits you as you slide the heavy lid off the chest. Inside there's a hat. It looks evil, not in an abstract way. It has eyes and they look like the eyes of a murderer, and it has teeth, which look like the teeth of an animal who would be a murderer if animals understood the concept of murder. Leave it alone. It's the hard hat and it makes things very hard. You can't take it off once it's on and it makes the game a million times harder. So, that's basically everything. We've done the Fricker Gang's hideout, done All Whole Mines, Thousand Snakes Gulch, Boring Springs Boneyard and the Cochrane Ranch. So there's literally nothing else here. I mean, we've done this horsery stuff. Oh, hang on. I can't remember if I'm supposed to... No, that's nothing. We've done everything here, we've done everything in the bar, we've done the sheriff's stuff, we've done all the trades that we can do, and we've sorted out Doc Alice. Oh, mostly scabs, yeah. And we sorted him out. Oh, quick, let's dig up some new stuff. Yay, a cup of mug. Can't go back to, to PK. So that's the last mug I can sell. I think we've basically we've just done everything now. 
So I'll go up to the barkeep and I will sell that for 25 meat. That's it. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to get the special perk. If you get over 13,000 meat or something and you haven't bought stuff, then you end up getting some kind of extra perk. But I'm not going to get that this time because I've only got 939. So, we are done in Boring Springs. This is the prologue and it basically helps you to understand the game concept and yeah. Once you leave Boring Springs you won't be able to come back. Any unfinished business you've got will forever remain unfinished. Are you sure you're ready to leave? Yes. Righty then, you're probably horsed and ready to start your new life in the West. All you need is a, now is a partner, somebody to share the trail with, somebody you can rely on for emotional and combat sport. Who will you take? Uh, Gary the Goblin. Trust me, Gary's the one you need for later on. Um, who will, yeah, you head back to the saloon's basement and smuggle Gary out under your coat. You head back to the saloon's, yeah, sorry, you consult the southwest, southeast west map the hostler gave you. It only lists two things, the town of Dirtwater and the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company's westernmost camp. So, let's head for Dirtwater. When Gary does this, you want to go talk to Gary. Howdy, Gary. Wanting more goblins meeting? Gary is hearing about goblins in an old fort nearby. Um, okay. What do you think we should do next? West to going fast? Okay, a big iron snake into riding, a fast taking us. A big iron... You mean the train? Yes, asking the training mans. Okie dokie. Go inside. And we're looking at Spadoon. This is Spadoon, which is a sort of brass bucket that people spit into instead of spitting on the floor, because not spitting at all is not an option in this society. I guess. I say this despite knowing that you're pretty intimately familiar with Spadoons already, sicko. Look, the George Saloon is pretty nice as saloons go. Actual glass in the windows, more than two kinds of drinks, a poker room instead of a cockfighting pit. This Spadoon is still a Spadoon. The rancid tobacco spit inside it isn't fancy rancid tobacco spit. Here we go again. Alright, fine. You are now hunkered down next to a brass filled bucket which has probably never been cleaned or empty because you're near the desert and the ambient humidity around here is pretty low. Low enough that the spit evaporates nearly as quickly as it accumulates. So that's a good thing, right? No, it's bad because it's only the water part of spit that evaporates. The brass bucket is half full of the rest of the spit. The toxins and filth that don't evaporate. Several years worth. Distilled and concentrated until it's the consistency of molasses. People aren't allowed to flick cigarette butts in the spittoon anymore because they bounce out. You're about to put your hand into a bucket of something the colour and viscosity of maple syrup. Except, instead of maple, it's flavoured with the inside of the mouths of people who chew cigars instead of smoking them and have never brushed their teeth. Corp. Feels like putting your hand into a bucket of lukewarm tapioca pudding. Except instead of tapioca, it's basically poison. It smells like somebody ran over a skunk, waited a week, and then set it on fire. Feels like your hand is dissolving. You found something. You found a tacky, filth-coloured porcelain cow figurine. It's a useless, disgusting thing that will make a great heirloom for your children, assuming you s you're still able to have any, and you hate them. Carl doesn't look actually in the mood to talk. Well, howdy there. Always nice to see a new face in town. Welcome to the Jewel Saloon. Hi, thanks. I'm Sez. Glad to know you, Sez. Folks around here just call me Lloyd. What can I do for you? Nice to meet you, Lloyd. I saw a sign out front advertising room. That's right, finest room in the house, and plenty of room for your partner too. Are you interested? What should it cost? Well, that's where you're in luck. The previous tenant was a banker fellow, and he paid a month in advance, right before getting himself killed by bandits. You seem like a decent sort, so the room's yours if you want it. Gratis. Oh, great! Need help with anything? Well, if you're handy with mechanical type stuff, something's gone wrong with the piano player. I thought the music sounded a little off. Yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. Let's see what I can do. Thanks, I poked around him myself, but I lost the key. This has suddenly taken a strange turn. What do you think of the jaw soon, Gary? Nice place, many people go to be. The basement's much nicer than Boring Springs. Hmm, yeah, they probably don't want people going in their basement. Aww. These guys must be going to sleep during brawl. Oh, some conversation. Leave them be! Come and stares into the distance. Piano doesn't react to you at all. He goes, it's not a good job. We'll come back to that. Mmm, slop. But we will need slop.
电影。Ah yes, go and get some saltpeter. So we've got to go to the military camp to get saltpeter. But for now, we've made it here, and I think this is probably the best place to leave it because I managed to do what I didn't think I'd be able to do. Okay, gang. So this is the new map, just so that we know. So this is dirt water. Haven't got anything drawn on here just yet. But we will. This is all the stuff that I got. So this is now in my offhand. Amazingly. Um, let's just see if there's anything I can do about spending. I can indeed. I think I'm going to up my mysticality. Just been asked. I've got these all on two, so I'm on the same level. Um, some of the rest of the stuff I'm going to be doing. So I've got stupid walking, goblin tongue, orange and mostly scabs. These are, believe it or not, perks. But I think there's nothing else that I can really do here for now, so I'm going to leave it, I'm going to read up on what I need to do next because I always seem to mess up, and I will come back to this. But uh, thank you for watching for now.